Welcome to lecture 18 of Corporate Finance. We are continuing our discussion on the theories of capital structure. So first we are going to understand what is bankruptcy cost and we are going to divide this bankruptcy cost into indirect bankruptcy cost and a direct bankruptcy cost. Then we are going to discuss the static theory and the last theory in the course of uh, capital structures is packing order theory. So starting with bankruptcy cost, uh, when the, the firm is unable to pay its bondholder the interest amount or the principal amount, then we say that the firm is financially distressed. And when that stays for long, when the firm stays financially distressed for long, or the worst case scenario of being financially distressed is going bankrupt. That is the firm liquidates either voluntarily or involuntarily all of its assets and then repay the amount that it, uh, its liability towards its bondholders. Now when bankruptcy would happen, there are certain costs that are related to bankruptcy. And uh, uh, first co cost that we are going to discuss is the direct bankruptcy cost. Uh, this includes the legal and administrative expenses that firm would have to incur during the course of bankruptcy. For example, the uh, fee of the uh, legal advisors, uh, the court fees, so these are the direct bankruptcy costs that would have to be incurred. For example, when Enron bank, uh, went bankrupt, it had to pay, uh, it had incurred a direct bankruptcy cost of $1 million. Uh, $1 billion. Similarly, when WorldCom went bankrupt, it incurred a total cost of $600 million. And the same for, goes for the United Airlines. Now, there is second cost, which is uh, the indirect bankruptcy cost. And this cost in, is occurred uh, in, the, in the effort of avoiding bankruptcy. For example, when, when the management of the firm would be engaged in uh, the legal battle of avoiding bankruptcy, then they would not be as much focused towards the, 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 the business uh, operations. And that might, uh, uh, the firm might lose some opportunities that they might uh, have earned from. And similarly, then there is uh, a cost that uh, and due to the drop of sales. So for example, when, when a customer is going to buy a certain product and he knows that the firm is might go bankrupt, uh, so then who would, uh, who would pay the warranty uh, or from whom the customer would claim the warranty? The customer might not be willing to buy uh, the product from the firm that is in the process of bank filing bankruptcy. So similarly ha uh, happened to GM and For Ford in the uh, financial crisis of 2008 and 9 that they lost the sale. Uh, one reason is that uh, because of the warranty and then uh, there are parts that uh, or after sale services who would provide the after sale services there is uncertainty related to that too. <clears throat> so these uh, these costs are related to bankruptcy and they incur because of higher debt. So if debt increases, although it increases the tax shield or tax saving, but at the same time it also increases the chance of going bankrupt or the chances that the firm might not be able to repay the debt amount. 
right that that increases with the increase in that so we call it bankruptcy cost right <clears throat> this is the positive part of having a debt and this is the negative part or negative consequence of having a debt so now in in previous uh, mm theory although we considered uh, this part which is the positive aspect of having debt that is tax shield but we haven't yet considered bankruptcy cost in previous theories we all always assume that there is no bankruptcy cost that you can keep on increasing debt but that would not increase your chances of going bankrupt but let's consider this aspect because it's related to debt so uh, the static theory is the theory that considers the bankruptcy cost as well and uh, it's also called trade off theory and we would explain why is that so <clears throat> so it says that firm should borrow up to the point where the tax benefit from the debt is exactly equal to the bankruptcy cost what it means is that although debt would give us tax benefit and firm should exploit this benefit they should um, uh, you know exploit the opportunity but they must also take care of the bankruptcy cost so the the debt should increase to a point where the tax benefit is either greater to or equal to the cost that can be occurred through bankruptcy right it should not be the case that we keep on increasing the debt to a point where the tax benefit is lower than the bankruptcy cost so there must be a trade off between the tax benefit and bankruptcy cost uh, it's also called static theory for a reason because we know that in balance sheets we have this asset sides and this liability plus owner equity side and we keep on assuming that this asset side would remain same or it would remain static we are only concerned with this side of the uh, the the balance sheet so that's why it's called static theory uh this graph would help us understand this idea <coughs> on the x axis we have total debt on the y axis we have the value of the firm right the value of the firm <coughs> so as debt increases the value of the firm keeps on rising this red line to this point let's assume this is the the amount of debt we have and this would be the maximum value of the firm so what this theory says is that as we keep on increasing debt the value of the firm will not increase indefinitely it would increase to a point at which the max the value of the firm would be maximum and after that if we keep on increasing debt the value of the firm would decrease so so remember this thing this equation this is from the mm theory with taxes and this blue line represents the mm theory with taxes what was the idea in mm theory with taxes it was that as we keep on increasing debt the value of the firm keep on increasing but according to static theory it would increase but to a point after that it would start decreasing so and that decrease would be due to this financial distress cost or the bankruptcy cost so that means that uh Uh, okay let let's understand uh, what would happen to vac and then we would conclude this so previously uh, mm theory with taxes assumed that as we keep on increasing debt what would happen to vac it would keep on decreasing but static theory says that as we increase debt 
vac would decrease to a certain point at which at this point vac would be minimum the cost of capital would be minimum and we if we keep on increasing the uh, the debt to equity ratio or if we keep on increasing that the vac would start increasing and that increase is due to increase in cost of debt okay so if you remember the case 2 mm theory with taxes it said increase the debt the value of the firm would increase but this uh, and the case 1 said that it doesn't matter whether you increase or decrease the debt the value of the firm would remain same and this 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 horizontal line this this yellowish line represents this case one mm theory with no taxes and this blue line represents the mm theory with taxes which was case two this case three which is static theory it says that if you keep on increasing that value of the firm would increase to a certain point and then it would decrease after that so it says that the debt of the firm should be to a point where the value would be maximum and similarly if we compare the VAC in all these three cases so case once with without taxes that VAC would not be affected that is irrelevant whether you increase the debt or decrease the debt the uh, the, the VAC would be constant would be same the second uh, theory case 2 which was mm with taxes it said that as you increase debt the VAC would decrease keep on decreasing but the static theory says that as you increase debt it would decrease to a certain point after that it would start increasing so this is which uh, this is the point which one should target and if we draw the pie again if you remember when there were no taxes so the the value of the firm was divided between the shareholder and the bondholder when we introduced the taxes we said that the value of the firm would be divided into bondholder shareholder and the tax claim which is the cost now we if, if we in, uh, introduce the bankruptcy claim then that means the value of the firm would be divided in in these uh, four uh, quadrants in these four parts so uh, okay so the conclusion is that case one theory with taxes says that with no taxes or bankruptcy i mean no bankruptcy cost the value of the firm and its vac is not affected by capital structure so uh, debt or capital structure is irrelevant case 2 mm with taxes uh, with taxes and with no bankruptcy cost the value of the firm increases and the vac decreases as we increase debt and the last case the static theory with corporate taxes now we include tax we assume there are taxes and we assume there is bankruptcy cost the value of the firm increases and the VAG decreases to a particular point which is the optimal amount of borrowing <clears throat> okay so that is uh, advantageous uh, when the firm is in a tax paying position right that means if the firm have profit right so assume if a firm is in loss then they wouldn't have to pay any taxes if they don't have to pay any taxes then there would be no tax saving so tax is only beneficial when the firm is in a tax paying position they have profit when the profit is higher the higher the profit the higher would be the tax shield <clears throat> and lastly when the tax rates are higher the higher the tax rates the higher would be the tax shield so uh, the, the static theory says that tax is beneficial but in these three scenarios and uh, the distress risk the firm experiences uh, less distress risk uh so that would be dis, uh, would be advantageous for those firms only 
which are experienced less distress risk. They have stable earnings. They have stable sales. Right. They have stable cash flows. They know they can pay their bondholders and that would be advantageous for the firms with more tangible assets. Uh, by tangible assets, we mean the assets that the firm can sell. So, for example, a technological firm would have more of human capital, right, which they cannot sell, which is not tangible asset. And why is this necessary? Why is this important? Is because if the firm enters into cash flow problem, then what the firm can do is liquidate those tangible assets and repay the debt or the interest uh, liability. But if there are less tangible assets, then the firm would have that opportunity to exploit. So that would be advantageous for firm with less distress risk and the firm with more tangible assets. So this brings us to our last theory, the packing order theory. So this packing order theory says that the firm prefer to use internal financing whenever possible. Okay, uh, and profitable firms don't need external financing. What this packing order theory is saying is that firms should always raise capital first from their retained earning. This should be first preference of the firm to raise capital from retained earning. If they are raising capital from the retained earning, then that is giving the signal to the, to the, to the shareholders that firm is in strong position. They, they are profitable, right? The second option for the firm should be to issue debt, whether it is bonds or preferred stock. And the last option for the firm should be to go uh, uh, to issue stocks, right? And why is that so? Because there is a signal attached to issuing stocks. And that signal is that firm thinks that its stock is overvalued. Okay, let me explain this point. Assume you are the, uh, the owner of the firm or the manager of the firm. When will, will, you share, will you issue stocks? When you think that the price of the stock is higher in the market or when you think that it is lower in the market. Obviously, you would issue the stock, you would sell it to the general public when you think that the stock is its price in the market is higher. For example, you have already done IPO and now you need to issue more finances for that. You would issue right shares. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, so this gives the signal to the market that the firm would never issue more stocks if they don't think that the firm is uh, overvalued. Uh, and you would only buy back the shares from the market when they are overvalued. The firm would only buy back the shares from the open market when they are overvalued, right? So, <clears throat> what this pecking order theory says is that first preference of the firm should be to finance uh, any project or any expansion or any growth using the internal sources uh, which is its net income or retained earning this would give a signal to the firm that the firm is strong and they have good earnings the second source of generating finances should be debt this would give a signal to the market that firm is confident enough that they can pay the bondholder the interest and that they can repay the amount they are borrowing. That's why, that's why they are borrowing that. This is the signal that it would give. And the third uh, preference, the last preference rather I would say is 
that the firm would issue stocks and that is because of the uh, the signal that it is giving the signal would be negative signal that's why if you if you look into the stock market whenever a share issues or whenever a company issues uh, right shares by right share we mean that let's say a company already had issued an ipo uh, say in 2010 but now in 2020 they need more capital and they decided uh, to not go for that rather to issue shares now what they would do is they would share issue right share right there is a mechanism of right share but let's not go over there but understand this that uh, whenever a company issues right shares its prices would most probably drop right and that is because it it is giving the share to the it is giving the signal to the shareholders that this specific stock is overvalued and that's why firm is uh, selling it otherwise they wouldn't have sold it okay uh, i would recommend that you go through these questions in your textbook and see if uh, if there is any query related to uh, to these and you can uh, come back to me